must also apply to the Albanian populated areas, which means the unification of Kosovo with the Joshka Fischer gave a speech that I have watched on YouTube, I don't know, five times. The speech, for those of you who have not, I mean, who do not know this, 1999, and all of a sudden, yeah, started, the Greens had, were in a, in a way, it would be great if we had a video beam here, we could show like just 20 seconds of this amazing speech, was trying to, now, you were 17 then, I, and I guess you were already very much politically interested. I don't remember the speech because I haven't been at the party convention in Bielefeld. The beginning of your summary was very exact, and then the sharpness uh, got higher, but it was less exact. Okay. I think that it's not right to say that Germany has put Kosovo down. We had a different assessment from uh, others regarding the majorities in the committee uh, of um, ministerial representatives. So we were uh, not willing to go into a situation where we would see an amendment failing, although we vote in favor. And this is the point. So we talked to our partners to get a common position on voting together, yes, and this were the new conditions. And frankly, for Germany so far, it was clear that we would not link Council of Europe and the ASMM, and we changed that, but for other partners of us, this was different from the beginning. They were much... We are talking about France. Important partners. Yeah. So what then would have been the option that Germany is voting different from other uh, close European Quinn partners in the Committee of Ministerial Representatives and probably from our assessment the vote would fail? I think this would be... I mean, the trust in Kosovo would be very big. We would be the heroes. Uh, but I think the possibility to try it again successfully would be even lower. Yeah? So um, that's the facts. You don't have to, I mean, I don't have to say that I like this condition on forwarding the ASMM draft uh, of the five to the Constitutional Court, but it's not a question of I like it or if Vuitton likes it. Sometimes life is like it is, and this is the condition which uh, is asked to be met. And uh, now the turning point for, for this, or yes or no. And uh, so I would not say Kos Germany let Kosovo down. And especially on one point, what you forgot in your summary is that the year before, the forwarding of the application from the Committee of Ministerial Representatives to the Parliamentarian Assembly has been done only because of Germany. We were putting all our lobby efforts our time from my minister, from my chancellor, and all our might to pushing the Icelandic presidency to forward it in a vote, which was also not animonious, which some people say it's usual in Strasbourg. So uh, in that time also, we were going out telling to our partners, we push you now, follow us, because this will lead also to positive progress regarding uh, the dialogue. And then one year later, those partners said, like, listen, guys, <laughs> what happened on the ground? Yeah, so Greens and Bielefeld, because our votes were needed in Parliament um, in, as part of the coalition. But actually, the decisive vote, and also, I would say, one of the decisive points um, where uh, after Rambouillet, there was this kind of ultimatum, and the German parliament decided on an amendment which would allow NATO to bomb if the diplomatic um, results are not coming out. And this decision was done in the intermediate time between German elections and the new parliament being in place, actually. And this was done uh, also with the green votes, if I remember right, but you would have to counter-check it because I'm a politician now, so never trust what I'm saying. <clears throat> I don't, um, don't worry. So the moment for the Greens was that on the party convention in Bielefeld, it was two amendments there, and it was about do we stop a campaign which is already going on? Um, this was the argument of the left-wingers to say we stop the war to come to negotiations, or we are okay with the war is going on and we don't stop it. And I think this was politically relevant. Um, but 
to go a bit more back on, you could say Bielefeld was decisive, but for the Greens, Srebrenica was decisive. And this is very important to know, and I met uh, some of the people there. There was a Green delegation from the Green Parliament um, uh, who met in, who were in Bosnia two weeks after the genocide in Srebrenica took place. And they met some of the women from Srebrenica who were escaping, and they were meeting them. And um, if you talk to people like Marie-Louise Beck or Christa Saga, um, you would see that their pacifism, which they were carrying throughout their political life and biography, was changed in that moment when they were talking to the, um, to the victims of the genocide, which, um, as you know, could have probably been um, by bombing um, stopped or, or, or prevented. Um, the, uh, in, at the end of 1991, what Rugova had explained as the three options was something that we had uh, in the autumn of 91 um, created as a platform not only for the Kosovo Albanian parties, but in consultation with the Albanian parties of ex-Yugoslavia, this became our platform. And so we were reactive to the other national movements uh, throughout. At the same time, we did something that has reverberations now, which is we considered that the Albanian movement needs to be pluricentric. So it not become monocentric, ethnocentric. There was not a one ethnic capital that would determine the Albanian policies. And throughout the, these three, 30 something years, we have actually achieved uh, in something that is helpful to Southeastern Europe, which is we consider the Albanian a cultural space, a united cultural space, not necessarily the need for an Albanian political united, united political space. And this is differing us to a great extent from the Serbian national question. Um, the turning point, of course, was that we stood, we held for a long period of time the nonviolent policy, which was something that we made a concert decision. It was not that we were only pushed to it, but it was something that we discussed to a great extent. There were temporary, maybe, you know, the way I, I see the, the events in the past, you know, brings a perspective that, you know, sort of represents uh, my generation. But when I was doing my PhD, I was looking at the documents and I was trying to see, you know, about the intervention. I, I not, I'm not sure if you have read the book of, you know, Josip Glaudic, I think yes. it's the inspiration. Yeah, uh, yes, and the book is amazing in a way that, you know, it represents all the events at that time. And, and for me, like, it's impossible to think uh, for, about Germany as a state at that time, because I think as Germany and the EU, and I think of an EU approach and how the EU was trying to sort of deal with the, with the issue in the Western Balkans, in, in, in former Yugoslavia at that time, and, you know, how slow and a bit inefficient they were, and then and how it was a lesson learned. If you look back, you will see that, Obviously, every crisis have pushed towards something. You know, in Germany, something happened, a breakthrough. It, it, it was a big breakthrough for Germany at that time. Uh, but also for EU that was becoming the EU that we know today, which is similarly to Ukraine. Today, we're talking about the EU reforms. We're talking about the future of the EU. We're talking about how the EU is going to look like while being pushed externally by a crisis. And, and I think we can easily draw parallels between the two events, how, you know, it made Germany change its foreign policy and security, uh, Germany's contribution in EU's foreign policy, but also how, you know, these external events have helped, you know, to foster this domestic debate that in a way brought big change in, in the way that Germany navigates. Well, I, I, I just, you know, came from the US and, you know, like, if, if you really want to see uh, how easily Germany is blamed, <laughs> you should go there and see how, uh, how you know, in the US uh, the German role has been perceived in the, in the past uh, two decades in the Western Balkans. So, yes, I mean, there is a lot that has happened, but, you know, at that time, the EU was going through massive changes, 
cabled a report to Bonn about his impressions. About his meeting with Mr. Rugova, he said the following, I'm quoting more than just a footnote for the history not only of the Greens, but also for Germany, and this was triggered by Kosovo. Now, uh, here, which says 20 years, but I think, you know, four or five years more or less doesn't really change anything. Um, I have spent, I uh, will be publishing a, a book, and when I was dealing with Kosovo, I met Mr. Suroy. The, an independent, all Albanian state is what we demand. The unification with Albania is considered desirable, over according to the diplomat who met him and wrote an internal cable. And Mr. Suroy was also one of the interlocutors. Kosovo, Mr. Suroy continued, agreed that they wanted to get out of Serbia. The only difference, greater Croatia. And what was your impression at the time? How did German diplomats react to that? United Albania can be a football club now, but uh, uh, at the time, 